In this lecture, we are going to talk about the CNN, which is one of the most popular neural architectures. And this CNN works pretty well for image processing, NLP, and so on. This is a typical CNN architecture, which gets images as an input. And then first, we're going to do the convolution on this image, and it will generate many feature maps. And then we have a subsampling, which reduces the information from this convolution. And after that, we do have a series of layers, which includes convolutions and subsampling, convolution and subsampling. And finally, all the information from this part will be connected to a linear layer, which is also called fully connected, or sometimes we call this one as dense net. which is exactly the same as uh, a typical softmax classifier and this will predict our labels for a given image. And then what is the convolutions? So suppose we have a very cute image like this and then it has certain width and height. And in this case also it's RGB color so it's gonna be uh, depth is 3. So if you are going to use just a simple softmax classifier, we are just gonna use all pixel information as, a, as an input. But the convolutions, the key idea is we are going to look at only small portion of image at once. So we are going to use a filter which is much smaller than image and they will look at only a small portion of image that is often called the patch. And then we do some operations and then get one value from this the patch. Of course this filter can go around the entire image and then we're gonna see the entire images but we're gonna look at only a small portion at a time. That's the key idea of the convolutions. Let's see how convolution works with a small image like this, 3 by 3, and depth is only 1. This is our image. For the filter, we can decide the size. But here, let's say we're going to have a filter 2 by 2, and depth is usually the same as image. And then how are we going to do convolution? So basically, using this filter, we look at a small portion of image here is 2 by 2 only we look at 2x2 two two portion of this image and then we do have some competition and then we're gonna move these filters to the left how much we're gonna move is called the stride so in this case the stride is 1 so we, which means that we're gonna move one step to the right and then we do some operations and we get one number after this we don't have any more places to go so we're gonna move down this is our another convolution operations and then finally, we're going to do uh, here, and then this will cover entire image. So as a result, we are going to have four numbers, which are two by two numbers. So this is output of our convolution. Let's see how we're going to get the uh, convolution operation using this filter. So here we have uh, the pixel values are 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, and 7, and 9. And then for the weight value, usually this value will be trained during our training process, but here, let's say we have certain values like this. And in the first, what we're going to do is that we're going to select small patch using this filter, and then using the values inside of this patch, and then uh, this, the filter, we're going to compute one single value. What is the operation? The operation is dot product, so which means w dot product, with x. This is how we're going to compute this one value. And then in this case, what we have here is 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, and 0 0.4. And then in x, what we have here is 1, 2, 4, 5. So that product is basically we compute this, we multiply these two values and then we multiply these two values and so on and then and then we add them all. So here in example, what we have is that 0 0.1 times 1 is 0 0.1 plus 0 0.5 times 2 is 1 and so on. So it's 1.2, this is 1.2 and then this one is 2, 2. And then we add up all, then basically it's 3.2, 4.2 and 4.3. So this value will be 4.3. So 4.3 will be here. 
and then we just move the window to here and then in the same manner using our filter we can compute w dot product with x also often we express this one as w transpose and x it's a matrix multiplication in this case so by doing that we can get this value and then so on we're gonna move this window again to other area like here and then we compute on this value and so on also it's very common to add a padding usually it's called the zero padding because we're gonna put zeros in the boundaries of the images so by doing that we can change the output of which map for example here with the same filter 2x2 two two, we're gonna look at this part of image and then second we're gonna look at this part of image and then lastly we are going to look at this so we have three values in here and then also in down there we also gonna have a three so it's, we're gonna get three by three feature map this animation shows how convolution works in action so using this size of a filter we're gonna move around this entire image and then we compute the one value and then we create this as a, a feature map and then of course we can think of a various size of paddings so different size of padding can generate different size of uh, feature maps. And then for the stride, uh, in our previous example, we just uh, used one stride as one. So which means that we're going to move one step at a time. But we can move two steps and we can move three steps. This is called a stride. How about images with a certain depth? For example, we have colors RGB, so depth is three. So then basically idea is the same. So only difference is that we're going to use filter with the same depths and then again here using this filter we look at only small portion of the images and then we do a dot product but here we just have a few more numbers to do operation here instead of just the 5 5 so 5 5 times 3 so 75 dimension a dot product open all add bias to get one single value and then by applying this we're gonna generate this number so here is a big image, so 32 by 32, and then the filter is 5, and then just think about what will be the output. So here, we're going to start from here, stride is 1, we're going to move one step at a time, so how many steps you can go, that is 28. And then here is the same, how many steps you can go down by 1 by 1, this is also 28. So this is the output of our activation map size. And then of course we can apply multiple filters so here we do have a different filters usually they have a different values can generate different activation maps and then we can have many many filters and basically then how many filters we are going to use will decide the depth of generated activation maps so by applying these six filters we can create activation map with the depth six to 28 is decided by our original image size with this filter size and similarly we can apply another convolution layer here with the 10 filters if you are using 10 filters the output will be depth 10 and then also here we are using 5 by 5 filter with a 20, on 28 by 28 images which can generate 24 by 24 activation maps and then often we are applying this pooling or subsampling layers after each convolution layer. The idea of this is we want to reduce the amount of information generated by convolution layers. So how are we gonna do that? Suppose we have uh, some the feature map or activation map generated by previous convolution layers. And then we are going to use the exactly the same filter idea here. Here filter size is two by two, which means that we're gonna look at image by two at, a, at once and then max pooling is very commonly used which means that in this patch we're gonna select the maximum value which is six so we're gonna copy or use this uh, as an output and then we're gonna move this window to here but how much we're gonna move it's defined by our stride stride is two so two step so we're gonna have this window and then we look at the maximum value and then we use this one as an output and so on so this is the maximum value and this is the maximum value so after this max pooling we are going to have uh, this output 
And this animation basically shows how this max pooling works in action. So in this area, we select the maximum value and then put that in as an output. And then also we have other operations like average pooling, which compute averages in this patch. Now we understand how it works in the CNN and what is the subsampling, and this is exactly the same as our previously softmax classifier. What's the main differences between our fully connected neural net and the CNN, which is called locally connected neural net? In the fully connected neural net, basically, if you have a given image, you're gonna read all of them, and then we feed that as our input. However, in the CNN, we use the small size of the filters, and then all the weights are shared. And then using small size of filters, we look at all the images. So as a result, we're going to have much smaller weights. Also, it's much more flexible to handle the images. Let's try to implement this. So in our example, we are going to use MNIST data set with two convolution layers and one fully connected layer. For the convolution layer, we can just implement using the API which is called COMP2D, which takes input as in channels and out channels and then kernel size. So in our example, the image has one color, so the in channel size is one. The out channel, you can decide how many outputs you want to generate. So here, let's say we want to generate 10 channels. And the kernel size, you can decide also. In this case, is our kernel size is 5 by 5. The max pooling is even simpler. We can just provide a kernel size. How, how big is, how big you want to see at once for the pooling. And then how we can implement this one? It's exactly like our softmax classifier. We're just going to use one linear. Let's get into the implementation here. So first, we're gonna define our class. And then in our init, we define all the components we need. So here, come 2 d for example, takes as a 10, in channel and then generate a 10 out channel kernel size is 5 and then second we are going to use 10 in channel because we generate 10 so it is two value must be the same and they will generate 20 out channels and then the kernel size is 5 and then we can define this max pooling and then we can define fully connected layer and then forward we basically connect them all together so here x is as an input with a convolution layer and then we use the max pooling and the ReLU, and this output is used second layer as input, and so on. And then at this point, what we have is that some activation maps with the 20 channels, so we want to flatten them to feed to linear. So this is how we're gonna flatten on this tensor, so the view, and then we flatten with this info size. This is basically N batch size, and then uh, the rest will be computed automatically. So we flatten this ones, and then we feed that to our fully connected layer, and this will create the final output, and then we feed this one to log softmax. Then, what is the right value here? So the question here is, the, what is the size that we're gonna get after finishing all this conversion layer? This is a big question. So obviously, for given image size and then for given filter size, you can compute one by one. However, if you're not sure, just to put any random value like this. And then we just execute this program, and then PyTorch will complain. So it says, here, what I feed is the 64 by 320 metrics. Try to multiply with uh, your weight, which is 100 to 10, but it's a mismatch, right? So which means that after flattening this, what we get is this ones. So this 64 sounds like batch size n, and here is our flattened vector tensor size 320. So what will be the right value here? So these two numbers must be the equal. So our right number for this one is 320. So we don't have to really compute, just to put any number and then run, and it will give you the numbers. Also, if you want to know what is the size of these tensors, just print out here x dot size, and they will give you the size of these tensors, and see everything is okay. 
And then the rest part is the same. We can use exactly the same way we trained in the softmax classifier, and then we can get the results just to do forward and then compute the loss, and then we do backward and then we do update. And then as you see, our uh, epoch was on the loss is going down, and then the accuracy now we get 98%. Previously, it's something 98%, but now using the CNN, we get much, much better result. Now, because we understand the CNN, so we can connect more layers, right? Three layers, four layers, and then also we can use many uh, layers for the fully connected. So we can try uh, this a little bit deeper network as an exercise. Also, in each kernel, you can make a different size of a kernels and see which one works better. In our next lecture, we are going to talk about much more exciting or advanced CNN architectures.